kind of cool that the only scraps he had is that right there. He pretty much used the whole sheet of plywood. Anyway, so now I just got to mark those uh, slots. Um, the instructions or the the plans say that you got to measure out the distance halfway and just cut it halfway every time there's a slot. So I believe the ten the big ones are ten inches across, so the slot goes five inches deep at the biggest part. And he's got to remeasure it each time. All right, now we're just taking the. Uh the stencils and the boards themselves and just making little marks where uh, the slots are going to line up at. So I just laid my stencil on top of the board and I slide it up a little bit to do the bottom marks and I slide it down just a little bit to do the top marks making sure it's all even all the way around. I've already done the stack of small boards, one of the medium ones and it's going to keep on going. So even right now as I'm marking the cutouts, you can see on that board the lines that have been made so I can know uh, where I need to make each of the slots. So what I'm doing is I'm taking um, each of these little marks that I made with my stencil before and I'm lining this board up that I had just one of the scrap pieces um, with the lines with the marks. So there's one there and there's one there on the other side that you can see. I lined the top end up as well and I just take a pencil and run it right along the bottom of that just like that and that's what makes those marks all straight so you can uh, keep the slots you know where they're supposed to be because this whole thing has got to be pretty spot on with the measurements otherwise it's not going to fit okay so we're making progress so let me tell you what I've been doing up to this point um, I've taken the boards themselves and I've marked the midpoint on uh, each of the stripes where you're putting the slots how I did that is if you take the whole measurement, you can see that this one is eight, a little over eight and an eighth. Um, so what I did is it doesn't, you want the slot to actually be a little bit longer than normal. Um, so I just did barely over four on that just because I want the uh, bigger end of the half, you know, only by like an eighth of an inch, but the bigger end of the half to be here. So that when you cut it, it slides down easily. Um, like let's say with each of the marks you're gonna have four with the overcuts no sorry so there's four of each pieces the big the medium and the small um, so there's gonna be two with the slots on top and then two with the slots on bottom so that they kind of mesh together um, when you're putting the whole thing together like this the ones with the slots on the top so you can see this one has a groove in the top right here so it slides underneath this one. They're really hard um, to get underneath if the angles aren't perfect. So you want to cut just a little bit big. Like let's say, you know how I drew the lines on it, you want to cut right on those lines. So you have a little bit of space to wiggle. You know obviously it depends on you know how good you are with the saw and everything. Um, but you can do it however you want. So when I take the uh, skill saw, well I guess jigsaw, um, how I cut them out, let's say I was going to do this one, I would come along this line here with the jigsaw, and I would hit this part right here, and I'd back up, and then I'd curve in like this, and cut that, and then I'd curve in again and cut that, curve in again and cut that, that way I have a gap right here, where I can put the jigsaw in and cut straight across right here, Then I have this kind of whole shape cut out, and then I come in on this side, and it just drops the whole chunk out. So you guess what I've done right here, I came in straight and then I backed up and then I cut right there all the way to the center line. And then I cut out those chunks just like that. And that leaves it just big enough for my saw blade to fit in. Just down there. Like that. And then I can cut straight across like I mentioned before. Alright, we're making some serious progress. We've come a long way since we came from that uh, string tied to the grill there. So anyway, everything's uh, put together right now. So what I'm probably going to do is just get some sandpaper and kind of smooth some edges. Um, if you look really closely, sometimes there's like little gaps and stuff. Like right there, there's one. Um, I bought some caulk and stuff like that that'll probably go through and um, 
kind of clean that up, just fill the gaps and stuff like that. I think that looks pretty darn good. Just make sure all your cuts are pretty right on. I thought it would be, you know, harder to put the pieces in the farther you got out from the center, but it's actually easier to put the end pieces in. So I just went through um, and just hit some of the bigger holes and stuff with the caulk. Um, nothing too big. I guess you could go through and, you know, hit every corner if you wanted to make it all uniform. Um, to me, it's not that big of a deal. Um, all my cuts were pretty, pretty tight anyway. So yeah. Now I was going to go put a base coat on it right now, black. And then uh, I bought another paint can. That's kind of cool, it's this color changing uh, paint. So it kind of goes from black to green, just kind of depends on what uh, um, type of light you're in. Anyway, yeah, that's what you get when uh, you don't have a girlfriend, don't live with your mom, you can pick your own paint colors. All right, so apparently you can't paint this thing laying down very well. The spray paint doesn't uh, go down in those cracks. So I came out here and propped it up with a uh, old curtain from a bath, like a little bath curtain rod. So you know, now I have access to both sides and I'll be able to paint it a little bit easier. So one thing, um, when you're painting it, make sure that the back ends all line up, like all these little cross sections, um, so that you're not you don't have, you're hitting all the surface area that you're gonna have actually showing um, when it's up against your wall. So like, let's say this board was like an inch this direction, then if you painted it, when you put it back into place, there would be extra showing on this side. Anyway, so I've got all the black paint on, just the base coat. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let it dry for a second and then uh, put on the, the next coat of the colored paint, the cool stuff. So I took up eight cans of spray paint, which is a lot more than I thought it would be, but we're finally finished. So this is what the uh, shells finally look like. So hopefully you can get kind of a, an idea for how the color changing stuff works. So yeah. So that's how you make the uh, the shells. All we gotta do now is just mount them. Just kind of a side profile of them. So yeah. So if you have any questions or anything else, make sure to leave them in the comments. Um, I do put up videos, you know, every week or so. So if you're if you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe. And that's it. Thanks. Two things that I would do differently. I have to do it over again. Um, one is I would probably use a different type of wood. I would use the same stencils, um, but do it out of a board that's more, you know, that's supposed to be made into shells. Uh, these ones are really hard to fit out of one piece of plywood. If, you're do, if you are going to do it out of one piece of plywood, make sure that you cut as close to the lines as possible. Like put them like almost right on each other, the stencils, so that, you know, one cut will hit two stencils at some point, if that makes sense. Um, just because like if you leave even a millimeter of gap between the two, even if you have like a super fine pencil, it'll, it's, it's almost don't even fit. So I, you know, made mine work, cherry rigged it just a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's kind of hard to fit them on one piece of plywood. Um, I heard the other guy who did this, he actually took off, I believe a centimeter at the bottom, which made the entire shelf smaller, which is good because the shelves are pretty huge by themselves. Um, but yeah, those are just a few things I would have done different.